In today's episode, we're delighted to welcome back Matt Paxton on the show. We will chat about his five top tips to staying organized throughout the year, his TV shows, the legacy list and hoarders, and how about downsizing? So we can't wait for you to tune in and listen. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organizing your home. Now here's your host, Ingrid Jansen. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Ingrid. If you're new to the Declutter Hub podcast, you're so welcome. What you'll find is that we try and find the fun factor in the serious business of decluttering. And if you've been here for a while, you know exactly what we mean. So thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to get involved in conversations related to this podcast, it all takes place in our free Facebook group. So come and join our lovely, warm and supportive community. Go to declutterhub.com forward slash group to find out more. Hello, Matt. Welcome back to the show. Can you believe it's been two years I since cannot we've last believe. spoken? That's crazy. Thanks for having me back. And I cannot believe it has been two years. Gosh. I know. I know. And you know what? This morning I listened back because I was like, I kind of knew what we talked about, but like 110 episodes ago. So I thought, let me just listen in and have a have a listen to what we chatted about. I loved it. <laughs> Good. Good. I'm look. I'll talk all day. So like, I never know oh. what I said or anything. But I, I hope it was fun and I hope it was inspiring. It yeah. was. It was. And I really, really enjoyed that chat. And it kind of really geared me up for for recording today. And I thought, oh, I'm I'm looking forward to to chatting with you again because we had such a great conversation. And at the time, two years ago, I think you were starting your two, second season, and now you're on season five of your show, The Legacy List. It's incredible. It is. It's amazing. We've got, I mean, we've traveled the entire U.S. helping families go through their attics and, and hearing stories from loved ones. It's been really, really cool. And I'll tell you, since it's funny, if we haven't talked in two years, I've really, really kind of just hung into the power of the stories. You know, I had just written my book. Yeah. I just started this TV show and I will, I've had all this feedback now from, you know, hundreds of thousands of copies of the book sold and people are really embracing the theories of, of telling their family stories and it's helping them declutter. And it's been really fun because I get to hear all these incredible, like incredible stories. And uh, it's just been really, really fun. And I love it. Amazing. Amazing. Well, we're definitely going to talk about your show uh, a little bit more uh, later in this podcast, but I first wanted to kind of go, okay, you know, we have an opportunity to ask you questions. And um, so I thought, okay, let's start a bit more general before we kind of dive into downsizing and, and legacies and all of those things. Can you share with us maybe five things that people can do now to stay organized throughout the year? What okay. would your things be? Let's spend some time that. talking about yeah. that. So this is one thing I've been trying to focus on this year is like, all right, how do we get, because everyone just comes to me and they're paralyzed. They don't know what to do. And they're like, I don't know where to start. And it doesn't even give them a hundred tips, but they don't know where to start. So I'm going to give you five places to start. Yeah. And all of these really should be, you should limit yourself to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's an old, there's an old law. I was, believe it or not, I was an economist coming out of college. And so I studied economics and there's an old economic law that says you will use, I don't remember the name, but it says you will use whatever time allotted to finish the task you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. If you give somebody three weeks, they'll use three weeks. If you give them 30 minutes, they'll use 30 minutes. Right? So now I'm not saying you're going to clean your house in 15 minutes because I said you only get 15 minutes, but this yeah. individual task, it's meant to be short and it's meant to prove to you two things. One is you're supposed to visually see a difference, right? You yeah. should immediately visually see a difference. So you should have that visual um, excitement and positivity. Uh, and then secondly, it's proving to yourself that you can get something done, right? That's yeah. the emotional side of this. I want you to prove to yourself because, because at this point, most of us think we can't do anything right? yeah. and we think we're stuck. And so these exercises are going to show you that you can visually and emotionally. All right. First place I want you to start, and this is silly, but I want you to start in the bathroom, right? The loo, whatever we're going to call it. <laughs> the right? You've got to go in there and I believe 75% of the bottles in the bathroom are 10% full. Mm -hmm. 
Most of the items in there are 10% full. So I want you to go in there. Anything that's got less than 25% stuff in it, except for the perfumes and the colognes, get rid of everything else. All right. Um, if you are not wearing any, if you are not using these items with your current partner, I also want you to get rid of them. I cannot tell you how many people I'll go into the bathroom and they're like, oh yeah, that's my cologne from eighth grade. Yeah. You know, <laughs> And you're like, oh, are you planning on wearing that? Well, no. And then um, the holiday items. There's so many, like the, the fancy holiday soaps and the towels and the items that we can't, we can only use like once a month. Get rid of them. That's ridiculous. We don't need them anymore. It's just taking up space. All right. So very quick, three things. Right? Go in there. Get rid of the items that are 75% empty. Get rid of the items that you no longer use, realistically, with your, your current life. So I just yeah. benchmark on that as your current partner. Right? Yeah. If you don't have a partner, um, is it from a? I mean, like my favorite one is, oh, this is my child's medicine in the bathroom. Like, great. You know, it's my child's uh, poison ivy medicine. Great. How old's your son? Oh, he's forty six. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, I don't think we need that medicine anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, depending upon where you live, there's lots of different rules of of disposing of prescription medicine. Yeah. But a lot of the creams, a lot of the ointments, a lot of the things we keep just in case, you don't need them anymore. Right? Yeah. So believe it or not, if you just run through the bathroom in 15 minutes on all these topics, you can then pull out the stuff you're going to keep. And I want you to clean out the drawers. I know that sounds crazy. I want you to literally scrub out the drawers and get all the old nasty dried up uh, creams and the hair stubbles and all this stuff that's I'm talking about my bathroom at this point. All right. <laughs> and get rid of the stuff that you really, truly don't use now. Right. That's it. Currently, if you're not using it, then get rid of it because we don't need it. And then yeah. um, if you do that, I promise you, you're going to see about a half, about 50% of the stuff in your bathroom is going to disappear. I know. We, we talk a lot about, indeed, using it up. Just use it yeah. up. If you find, indeed, all these three or four, five or ten bottles with a tiny bit, use it up. Get rid of it. So let's talk about why you don't get rid of the stuff or why you don't use it up because you spend a lot of money for it. Yeah. I don't care. Your sanity and your time is worth more than whatever that item cost. And I've really, that is, since we last spoke, I'm going to tell you, that's the most important time I think is the most valuable thing we have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost 50. Uh, my son said, my 12 year old son said to me the other day, he goes, dad, I was reading in school that the average American only lives to 82. And he goes, you're almost 50 dad. He goes, so you've lived more years than you're going to. <laughs> and he was just impressed by the math, right? I mean, he's 12, yeah. but he goes, how does it feel to know that you're that you've got more years behind you than you do in front of you? And I'm like, oh God, he's right. You know, I hadn't thought of it that way. And I'm like, do I really want to spend time shaking out trying to get the last two percent of my shampoo? No, right? And those if I do that a hundred times a week, well, that's a hundred minutes. That's a that's an hour and a half. Like, and I could I spend know. an hour and a half doing something more enjoyable. I know that sounds silly. But I hear I hear you, Matt. I turned 50 last year. And <laughs> after after that, after the party and all the fun and all the thing, I suddenly thought, wow, I'm I'm 50. How, in my head, I'm not 50, but how no, can no, I, I be 50? <laughs> I mean, look, I sure wouldn't want to be 40, 30, or 20. I mean, I love my life at 50. I'm living my best life and I'm and I've never been happier. Yeah. That being said, yeah, yeah, I don't have I got what, 25 good years, 30 good years ahead of me. Like, yeah, let's use that time wisely, right? Yeah, I agree. I say, like, I can't stress, like, don't spend your time in the bathroom going through shampoo, right? That's silly, right. Yeah. So if you're gonna 15 minutes, if it's not half, if it's 25 percent or less, get rid of it, man. Just dump it and get rid of all the holiday stuff. You don't need it, and then wipe it clean. Wipe it out. Spend five minutes. Just spray it down. Wipe it clean, and then once it dries, put everything back in, and you're gonna see that it's reorganized. And you're going to have at least half of your space back. I know this sounds silly, but the bathroom is easy. It's very unemotional. Remember, all my clients are heavily emotional cleanouts because it's hoarding and it's estate cleanouts or downsizing. Like life has happened to you. If I'm in your house cleaning with you, something not great has happened, right? Life yeah. has made you make some decisions. And so I just want us to, to do this quick and easy so we can go out and have a good life again. Yeah, right. I agree. So that's number one. What's the second space? I know you, I don't even have them in front of me. What's the second space? You, uh, clo clothes and shoes. Clothes, clothes and, shoes. and shoes. All right. Clothes and shoes are tough. I'm very aware that my audience is mostly female. All right. My Facebook audience is 94% female. Yeah. So 
I'm going to assume that the audience here is the same as well. I get that some shoes come back into style. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to steal my wife's tip here. You know, my wife is a pretty well-known minimalist. Uh, her Instagram is raising simple. If you want to follow her, in fact, I read her book. That's how I met her. Her book was called, uh, minimalism for families and, um, her number one tip, and this is something that we've we've really envisioned in our life, which is choose your fan, your your real life over your fantasy life. Right? Mm-hmm. And so with clothes, I go into that real quick. There's a whole different things you can do in clothes, but the picking reality over fantasy. Do I actually use it in my real life today? Right? And so for me, I had to go through on sizes. I had to get very real on sizes. Um, here in the states, you know, size our pants go thirty to thirty six. Yeah. Right? Um, I'm a 36. I don't need to save my 28s <laughs> and my 32s. And I know this sounds silly, but it's time to get brutally honest. Like half of your closet is filled with stuff you can never wear and you never will wear again. And we're both brutally, honestly aware of it. And so what you're doing to yourself is you're actually kind of putting yourself down every single day and you're setting yourself up to fail every day that you wake up, you walk into that, that closet and you see half the stuff that you will never physically fit in again. Yeah. And it's when you thought you were better, by the way, you weren't, you're better now. Life is never better behind. It's almost always better now and ahead. Maybe we're 20 pounds heavier. Maybe we're two stones heavier. I don't know, but I'm happier. I have a better life. And so I want you to get rid of those relics from the past that you're holding on to because they absolutely, they take as much space of your brain as they do in your closet. Yeah. So yeah. get rid of them quick and donate, donate, donate. I cannot stress. We'll talk a lot about that today. Um, you do have some vintage clothes that can be sold. If they're good, high quality clothes that can be sold. There's lots of websites to use for that. Um, the real, real, I said, I mean, I do a lot of purses and, and bags and uh, not myself, but obviously for my clients and boots and things like that. I had one client that had uh, 20 pair of fry boots and they were going through a divorce and their partner obviously didn't want those boots anymore. And he's like, I mean, I guess I'm going to donate these. And I was like, dude, there's about th- three grand in boots here. I was like, let's put them up on, uh, and we put them on, what was that website? Um, God, I can't remember the website, but we put them on a, on a clothing website sold them real quick and he was able to give three grand to his kids yeah right? i know so i do want you to i mean be smart about that but go through be very real about what you're wearing now pull everything else out um it doesn't mean i'm not saying you have to get rid of all your gowns i'm not saying you have to get rid of all your dress clothes but be realistic on the day-to-day and it should get rid of half of your stuff um yeah i do, I do talk about this tip i don't i saw it on the internet it's not mine the clothes hanger tip everyone talks about it but i think it's very effective um, what I do on either your birthday or on, on the first of the year. Okay. Because All right. Number, you know, either on your birthday or on the first of the year, I want you to turn all the hangers going one way. Right. I'm, I'm because sure I've right. never, I've never tried that. And I always think, Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. It totally works. And so it's funny. I was, I was like, ah, I always gave that tip, but I never did it. And two years ago, I was like, I ought to do it. Right. I ought to do it. And and I'm, I mean, I'm a minimalist now, so I literally have five shirts. Oh. I, have two <laughs> I have no clothes and I don't, my closet is four feet wide and that's it. And I love it. I have no clothes and I absolutely love it. But when I had a lot of clothes, I finally tried this tip in which you put all the hangers going one way mm-hmm. and then every time you wear it, you turn the hanger the other way. Wow. And so same day the next year, you see what you did and didn't wear you. It's very clear. It's very yeah. obvious. Yeah. you will be amazed how much you don't wear. And so I was able to donate all the stuff that I didn't wear because I proved to myself I hadn't worn it except for one shirt, this one pink shirt that I love. And I was like, nope, I'm going to keep it because I love this shirt. (laughs) So, And that was on my birthday and I made it, but I got rid of like 25% of the stuff and I donated it. So I felt good. So I turned them all the same way again. And then the next year I came back and I still had not worn that pink shirt. It had been now <laughs> two years that I had not worn that awesome pink shirt. Right. And so, and then when I tried to try it on, I realized the collar was too, was too tight. I'd gained too much weight. And so I was like, all right, it's time. It's time to get rid of this. And so yeah. I had to use the rule. I didn't want to, I, two times I did not want to use my own rule, but I'm telling you, it is an effective tool because it lets you see what you are and you aren't wearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the, uh, the other one is a, Fashion show and fashion show sounds really simple, but if you've got grandkids or kids, uh, they will be brutally honest with you. And so if you're not sure if you should keep something or not, try it on. And your kid's reaction will tell you yeah. either, either you can't put it on, it doesn't mm-hmm. fit, or they're going to laugh at you. Like, yeah. 
Your kids are laughing at you hysterically. Well, I, I do it differently. When I buy something new, I, I go to my son and my daughter and I put it on when I bought something yeah. new and I don't take the tags off just yet. And I get the either the thumbs up or I get the look like, what were you think buying this? And right, normally if they're saying that, it goes back. <laughs> But the filter is your your child's brutal honesty, yeah. right? That's yeah. going to let you know what's good and what's not. So if you trust your own size, brutal honesty of your kids or your friends, uh, and then the reality of have you worn it or not, there's three ways to find out should you get rid of something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the best way. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, what can we do in the kitchen, Matt? Another area that we uh, need to do some work on, right? So this is very unpopular. I'm going to start with the biggest issue, water bottles. We've got too many daggone water bottles, man, especially here in the States. All right. You can use one. You need one, a water bottle for each person in the house. Yeah. That's it. End of discussion. <laughs> Don't need. There's no other equipment. You could add one. All right. Now, my family, I'm, we've been nine people in our family, right? So we have, you know, we have... We're, we're seven kids and uh, and then myself and Zoe. And so with nine plus one is 10. 10 water bottles is still a lot. Yeah. But I got to tell you, they were absolutely taken over. We just took a wine rack and uh, a nine bottle wine rack and we put all the water bottles in there. Yeah. And that was it. And so that was really, really easy. Um, I put it in the, like in the, in the hamper room, you know, in the mud room. Because yeah. I don't even want it in the kitchen. But that cleared out an entire rolling shelf for us because we had about 30 water bottles because everybody picks up an extra water bottle somewhere and you don't want to get rid of it. Donate all the water bottles. Right? If you've got four people in your family, I honestly think four or five water bottles is enough. Yeah. But we spent a lot of money on these water bottles. It's a crazy economy, honestly, the water bottle economy. And there's lots of different versions. It's a waste of time and space, and specifically in your, wa in your dishwasher. Like it fills up your house. So yeah. just you don't need them. So I'm, that's my number one like mission is to rid the world of <laughs> water bottles. Secondarily, get rid of all the vases, right? That's where most of the vases, the people give us flowers and they're like, oh, I love that vase. Oh, my boyfriend gave me those flowers. Great. Is that your husband? No. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to ask you this to the women listening. If your husband was keeping something from an ex-girlfriend in your house, would you want him to keep said item? I can tell you the answer is no. So do we, we can do the same thing in the kitchen. Get rid of all the vases. If your husband didn't give it to you, get rid of it. All right. Yeah. You need one or two really nice vases. The rest of them can be donated. Yeah. Um, and then the food storage containers, match them up. If they don't have a match, if you don't have a top for a bottom, get rid of it. And yeah. that'll clear. Up. Again, this is meant to be done in 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know, breaking it down is crucial, isn't it? Leslie and I talk about it all the time. You need to have that end goal inside, like where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve here? But you can't just say, I want to tidy up my house or I want to tidy up my whole kitchen. You need to awesome. break it down. It's impossible. What you said, you can't go, well, um, we need to go from 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 all to nothing overnight if clutters build up over a long time you have to break it down in small manageable chunks and exactly what you're saying that you start with 15 10 15 minutes every day you do a little bit honestly that was three tools that was three goals in the kitchen that's three separate days yeah i mean water bottles is one day storage containers <laughs> is one day right bases and extra bottles that's one day excuse me and then i would do the um i would do the actual refrigerator in one yeah. day Go through all the spices and this this is more of an american topic but i mean we have so these massive refrigerators and we just fill them with stuff um if you don't even remember buying the sauce get rid of it yeah I, mean, I do i do go by the expiration dates not everybody does i get that no judgment here judge free yeah. zone if you want to eat expired food that's cool you have all the right to do that i'm not going to get in the way of that but pull everything out of the fridge wipe it all down clean yeah. it down I know. I always say, you know, that's I, I, four days. That's four I, days. I yeah. agree. I agree. And I, I have the same thing as you. I if it's if I see it's expired or when I see it's nearly coming up and I'm like, will I still eat it or not? I do not eat expired food either. But there are other people who are like, it's all all good, all fine with me. But I always say, you know what? If a, if a spice is already expired for two years. That means it has been in your cupboard for at least two years and probably it was manufactured one or two years before that. So so my youngest kid is 10 and I always say if I've had this, this if I'm in the kitchen and I've had this item longer than that kid's been alive, uh, I think, oh, do I really need that? Yeah. Yeah. Do I really want to eat this? Do I want to? And it's the same as well in the bathroom, right? With creams and stuff. It's like, okay, 
<laughs> how long has it been in your cupboard? But I really don't want to use it. And I'm like, are you actually going to put it on your face? Well, you don't even know how old it is, when you bought it, if it's been in your cupboard for 12 years. Is this a good idea? <laughs> let's let's remember, we two of these two of these areas, not the clothes, not the closet, but the bathroom and the kitchen, we're starting in those areas because they're non-emotional. And I really yeah. want to it's easy. The whole point of this exercise is to find an easy way to do this. And so yeah. it's 15, limiting yourself to 15 minutes in a non-emotional room. I think that's really important. Yeah. Uh, I just thought about it as we were talking. If you have kids helping you, and I love it when the kids are involved. Yeah. I mean, eight and above, get them involved heavily. You can't say, go clean. It's it's not, it's absolutely too big for them, right? So with seniors and with aging American or aging people and your kids. So over, I say over 70 and under 10, you have to give them a very small finite number. So you say, Hey, go find me two toys that you can donate. Mm -hmm. Go find me your favorite water bottle that you don't need anymore that we can donate. Give them a very small number that is achievable. Cause if you say go clean, it's too big. It's too, yeah. they can't do it. It's not a concept they can grasp. And yeah. then they say, oh, and they quit and they start to feel like they failed. Yeah. You've got to give them a very small number. And so for you, whoever we are, if you're having a hard time, even with water bottles, then just pick one or two items. Say, okay, today I'm going to do two items I can donate. And you just pick two items and that's it. Yeah. And that is a win. That is absolutely a win. You know what you can and can't do. The goal is to do and to achieve. So if all you did today after this podcast was go and get rid of one water bottle you haven't used in a year, then that is a win. Go donate it, follow it all the way through, get rid of it. That is a win. I agree with you so much. A positivity, right? Celebrating the wins and celebrating what you achieve. Yep. And don't look back at everything that you haven't done, but really go, you know what? Bingo. I had a bad day today, but I did that one thing. Sometimes that one thing is much more important and a bigger win than figuring an entire room out. I mean, yeah. But most of us, I thought that was just an American feeling, but most of us here, we focus on what we didn't achieve versus what we did achieve. And yeah. I'm asking you all to flip that. Yeah. What did you achieve? And if, yeah. you, if you get focused on that and you believe in that every day, all of a sudden your house doesn't feel as overwhelming. Yeah. It's interesting because in our membership, we have something called um, goals and accountability. And we say, okay, write down what you want to achieve this month. Um, and also midway through the month, I check in and I go, hey, members, how are you doing uh, today? How's it going with your goals? And even if you not haven't done the ones you, you you wrote down, write the other stuff that you have done. Write it down because we always are so hard on ourselves on everything we haven't done and we beat ourselves up and are negative about it to ourselves. Well, it goes, oh, well, actually, oh, I did do that. And that happened. So I was sidetracked for a couple of days, but then I helped my friend or my mom or whatever, or work was blah, blah, blah. You know, something happens, but writing down the things you have done is amazing. I don't mean to be sexist here, but that is a female uh, trait, right? Women will tend, and I'm speaking generally here, my clients are mostly women. Women will focus on what they didn't get done. Men will focus on what they did. Just the other day, my wife's like, ah, I cooked dinner. We did this. We took all the kids to this and this. I didn't get anything done. And she worked <laughs> all day, right? And she's like, anything done. And I was like, well, I shaved. I'm like, <laughs> I'm over here. I'm over here wanting credit for yeah. shaving. Right. I'm like, give me credit. I did something. Look, guys tend to look on the positive side, women yeah. always. And so I want you guys to dumb it down, come over to our side, be proud of whatever you achieved, mm -hmm. right? whatever you achieved, because it's more than you achieved yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Um, junk mail. Let's talk about that, Matt. Throw it all away. We're good. And <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> if you owe somebody money, they're going to find you. <laughs> All right. You only need the last, the most recent statement. That's all that you need. I mean, mm -hmm. for the bank accounts, everything else, I do a poor man shred. I shred it up. I rip it up. Now, now I'm very diligent about this. I don't even put my mail down. I believe that when you walk into the house, if you put your mail down, it's going to stay there. Yeah. And so what I do is I go right to the recycling bin and I open the mail and I shred it right there and I put it in. Anything I have to keep goes to my office. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, if you have like five years of junk mail and it's sitting in a room and it's overwhelming, don't even look at it. Go straight to the shredder. And people will say, well, what if there's a hundred dollar bill in there? What if, what if you left it from a birthday party? You don't know if it is or isn't there now, yeah. right? And your time is still worth more than whatever's in there, right? Yeah. If it's a check, it's already expired. 
that. Yeah. I mean, like just stop already. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Get rid of it, shred it, be done with it. Now, I know I those this- daily habits are so important that immediately when it comes in, you handle it. Yep. And you go, right, okay, I have to do something with this or this needs to keep and the rest all boom in the recycling bin. A lot of my clients are are older. And so in that situation, I actually, I encourage people in their trunk of their car, the, was it the boot? Yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. Put a, uh, you put a box, I have a donation box and I have a shredding box in my car. Right? Um, not everybody does cars, but for some people, I've noticed if you have too much paper in a box, no one's going to pick it up. And same thing with donation. They don't pick it up. And it's like, oh, it's too heavy for me now. I can't pick it up. And they've done the act of donating. They've done the act of shredding. And they've released the item, but it stays in their home because the box is too heavy. Yeah. So I put it right there in the trunk of my car. I fill it with donate. Once that trunk, once that box is full, I go by the donation center and I let those guys, the guys will pick it up. They'll come yeah. right to it. And pick it up. Same thing with shredding. And so I don't even, I don't even give the shredding pile a space in my home. I actually leave it in my car. Oh, interesting. Then it goes, it goes away. Interesting. Interesting. Um, last uh, a topic before we have a break. You also said you need to look at your garage or your mud room or whatever, maybe your utility room or whatever you call it. Important too to have a look at to stay organized. I think it very realistic. It becomes temporary storage, and that's the place where you just got to finish the tasks. Mm-hmm. I mean, pick one each day. There's a task in there. Oh, I'm doing this to put my holiday decorations away. Great. Just do the holiday decoration that day. That's it. Finish that task, move on. This is not a room that'll be finished in a day, but there's probably 10, 20 minute tasks in there. Yeah. Honestly, I love the garage. You told me, I say that's a Friday. Like that should be a Friday morning. That's you finish it before the weekend starts. And that way you can go and relax and feel like I did something, I accomplished something, right? But it's a 10 minute, 15 minute. And then each week you're going to finish that up and buy it before the next holiday. That area is clean and gold. You need to get one more car in the garage yeah yeah i think you guys have a lot of garages not all of us have here we're parking on the street but we have sheds and 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 lofts and things it's all these things but again you don't want to see it as a whole project in one it's like how can you break this down into small jobs so you can see movement and you see actually I'm, i'm moving forward here i'm see i'm starting to see space my list of jobs is getting smaller I mean, I do this with my kids and I've started doing it myself. I actually will, if I've got, say, 10 tasks in that room, I absolutely will, will make them, I will absolutely make a sheet and I'll block off 10 squares. And when I get to the 10th square, me and my kids walk up the street and get ice cream. Yeah. And my reward is ice cream. But I mean, it used to be for my kids and now it's for me. I love it. <laughs> and and I, but I put a silly little menial, not expensive, you know, um, Go get a Walker's Crisp and some Lucas Aid, right? Like that was my favorite. When I my mom lived in England, and I would go and get that that grape. Uh, what was it? What was that flavor? That Lucas Aid, like Ribena or something? Did you have Ribena yeah. or the, the version of America's grape? But it was like a, it was a, it was really good. It was I loved it. And those Walkers, those Ready Walkers Crisp, they're the yes, best yes, in the, world. the red bag, they're the best in the world. Ready salted, they're the best. Yes. <laughs> and so if I finish something, that's my reward, right? And yeah. I go, and it's, it's a, it's not even a dollar. It's not even a pound. It's just a, it's just a small minimal reward, but it, I did it. I achieved it. And I went and got it done. And that is what we're, we're there to enjoy life, not punish ourselves for what we didn't finish. Agreed. And those five, I know there's a long talk on those five, but I'm telling you, that's the little stuff that weighs us down. And if you do those five and you, and you commit, there's, that's six months of work, y'all. That is not, you know, one or two days a week, six, 10 minutes each time. But at the end of six months, you're like, man, I really did something. I did yeah. it. And you accomplished it. And that's what this is about. Is yeah. accomplishing. Definitely. Let's go for a break. And then after the break, we'll talk more to Matt about his TV show, The Legacy List. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're talking to Matt Paxton. And before the break, he gave us some fantastic things to do to stay organized throughout the year. But now, of course, I want to talk to Matt about his fantastic TV shows, The Legacy List. And I want to talk about downsizing first, Matt, because I've been reading up. Unfortunately, here in the UK, we can't see The Legacy List. But The Legacy List, is it all created for people who are downsizing or are people also staying in their homes um, and just want to have less stuff? Well, when we started the show, it was for people leaving their home. And the reality is downsizing now includes aging in place. And so yeah. more people are staying in their home. So a lot of times we're cleaning out a garage or an extra bedroom to make space for grandma to move in, right? 
or we're making space for sometimes, I mean, a, a new one now is that the oldest child is now moving back in with their family, right? Housing is expensive around the world. Yeah. And so downsizing has different definitions now, but the reality is we're getting rid of stuff to make space for someone new to come into our house or for us to leave this entire yeah. home and start somewhere new. A lot of my business is cleaning out homes that people have been in there for 30, 40, 50 years. And it's a family home and they're moving away from it. So those are highly emotional clean outs. But the fun ones now are like cleaning out, you know, an extra room so that grandma can move in and be a, an active part of this family. I love those. Those are really fun because you're cleaning out grandma's old house and then you're cleaning out the adult kid's house and you're moving everything in. So if, if you need to, if you could give us just a couple of tips for people who are downsizing, what would your top two or three be? Well, my top one is, you've actually already said it. It's funny you, you said it earlier um, with your system. For me, it's knowing where you're going, right? What's your destination? What's your finish line? I yeah. don't start any task anymore on downsizing. If you don't know the very pureness of what you want to achieve, yeah. there's absolutely no point in starting. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your finish line moves each time. So you're yeah. never going to be happy. You're never going to be content, right? Um, I take it a little further. I write that down on a piece of paper. I mm -hmm. literally say, like, I want this room clean, room empty. Or, you know, so I'll put the number 75% empty, like whatever. But I, I put it on a piece of paper and I tape it on the wall. So I have to see it. Yeah. Um, you can't lie to yourself when you do that. You have to see it. I think it's really important. So that's, that's for me. I say it starts very small. We talked about the whole last segment was about starting small. If you, if you take on too much, you will absolutely quit. Yeah. Right? Oh, decluttering is the easiest thing to quit. Yeah. Absolutely. Easiest thing to quit. Right? Uh, number three is this, the legacy list. And I'm really big on creating a legacy list. That's the name of the show and what a yeah. legacy, legacy list. If you want to, we went deep into legacy list on the last episode I was on. Yeah. Um, but it, to really, if you haven't heard it, a legacy list is a list of the top five items in your home that tell your family story. And mm -hmm. I want you to pull those items, right? If your house is going to burn down, these are the five items you got to have. And they're often from loved ones, from family members that are no longer with us. I want you to grab those items. I want you to take a picture, whatever it is. I want you to record that story. I, mean, I happen to use an app called Artifacts, uh, A-R-T-I-F-C-T-S, Artifacts. It's pretty awesome. You take a picture of it, the item, and then you can either hit record or video, and then you tell the story. Fantastic. Oh, it's amazing. And so what I do is I actually give it to our clients and I say, all right, grandma, here's a picture of your vase. Tell me about this vase. Boom. And then grandma, we have grandma's story and grandma's voice. Right? Yeah. And the more you tell those stories, the easier to let go of the items. So creating that legacy list and then telling this, following through and telling the stories and sharing the stories with loved ones. That honestly is my most important tool of downsizing. Yeah. Uh, by far. I mean, yeah. in the stories, because that's why we hold on to the things is because the people in the stories. Are and and yeah. in your, in your TV show, I mean, of course, what we see on television, you know, we don't see all the behind the scenes, but do yeah. most people know which are their five favorite items or because in in tv world you know it's like they you know you've got like 25 minutes or 45 minutes for a show and they immediately go here's the thing but so i yeah so i film 10 items here's the behind the scenes all right i yeah. film 10 items and we only show five right you never know what we're going to have time for and, and sometimes they don't even know where they're like i my grandma's uh diamond ring i don't know where it is i hope you find it yeah. right and we got to go find it sometimes we find it sometimes we don't and you never know, but we try to really, really, um, in, in, the, in the real world, I try to get, I try to get five. Right? Yeah. I will say most people are certain on two or three, and then they're like, they got a lot of maybes on the other five. And what happens is when you start telling the stories, a certain memory or person will rise to the top and you'll find that you maybe an item that you thought was number five isn't because you find something else that's much more important. Yeah. And when you start telling those stories, that's where you really, you, you realize what's so important. I had a family that had a list of five. And then once we started cleaning out, they, they actually replaced four of them. Really? It was four of them. They were like, eh, no, I didn't realize we still had this. This is more important. And, and it was, right. it, it was really important memories. And so that's okay. Yeah. But you must find some amazing treasures, right? I mean, not, and not always in financial value, but just the stories behind them must be amazing. We do find a lot of financial value items, but they're not ever important, honestly. Yeah. If they're really valuable, people tend to want to sell them. And mm -hmm. I'd be like, well, how, how important is it if you're willing to sell it? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, like, I love my kid, 
I love my kid, but I'll sell them for five grand. You know, like <laughs> it doesn't really add up. So the it's it's always the super emotional ones. You know, like um, I'm trying to think of some of the. I mean, a lot we find a lot of historical items too. But like, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of a really really good one. Um, oh, well, like we. I mean, one lady we found her uh, just the other day. We found uh, her grandma's welding mask. And we found out that her grandmother was a welder during World War II. Wow. And she, she was this like intricate, like she would be the, she was a welder for the World War II biplanes that guys would, would go in and, and, you know, and fly off of World War II ships. I mean, and she, she'd always heard that her, you know, her, her grandma was a Rosie the Riveter. And she had heard that, but didn't have the actual item. And this is just a beat up old metal mask, you know, and if you don't know the story, it's just a piece of metal. Yeah. But you find out, and, and now this woman is, uh, she ended up being a very successful uh, entrepreneur, a very successful businesswoman. And her grandma was the first one to have a job and go to college in her family. Yeah. And this mask was a much bigger symbol than just a, a welder's mask, right? If it had been grandfather's welder's mask, nobody would have cared. But because it was grandma's, it created a whole nother storyline. And we were like, oh, this is like the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and then for the next generation of girls in this family to see that and not even under remember the girls, the granddaughters now don't even really know anything about World War II. No. They, they missed it. You know? Yeah. And war, if you say war to them, it's Vietnam. Right. Yeah. And uh, and but for the rest of the, you know, for me, I mean, all my clients the first 20 years all were World War II people. So I just think it's really fascinating the the special items that we find and then what it tells about our family and your work ethic and who you become. I mean, I will tell you the items I find in grandma's house now, it absolutely tells you the kind of people the third generation are going to be. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. So in your show, of course, I think, you, I mean, you identified the, 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 those five super important legacy list items what happens with all the other items that you got do you help your um, you people to sell and to donate but what do you do with this stuff i mean you know so, if it's, yeah let's first of all how do you know if it's valuable that's where it already starts doesn't okay it? so let's start there do we sell it do we keep it first thing we know is if you, if you absolutely know you want to keep it let's put that that's a separate pile that goes out if it's automatically keep it goes somewhere else if it's automatically give we know it's going to go to a, a loved one somewhere else in the world and it needs to be shipped that goes to another pile all right so we take the automatic keeps we take the automatic gifts we get them out of the way and that makes the pile smaller and now we got to decide okay do we sell it or then the tr of course the trash and recycling as well that's automatic and so we get rid of the trash automatic trash and the automatic recycling and we try to recycle as much as possible and yeah. we go pretty pretty quick on that we put tarps in the yard tents up and we go boom boom but we try to knock it out pretty because we're doing entire houses in like five days and, i know but we're getting rid of trash recycling that's obvious then we get rid of the keep and then you get rid of the gift all right now you're down to what's left is is it sell is it donate or is it i don't know right i don't know or maybe and so if we automatically, my team, we, I mean, we have 25 years of experience, so we know what's going to sell. We'll say, look, this will sell for that. This will sell for that. And we start to go on websites to look. Yeah. And the key on the websites is you got to find out what it's sold for, not what it's listed for. Right. Biggest mistake. People, well, it's listed right here on eBay for a million dollars. And I go, great. Has it sold? No. Yeah. Right. It's going to sell for $3 because that's yeah. what it's right? Something is only worth what an independent third party will pay you. Yeah. If we're talking financial value. Okay. Um, here in the States, I tell people it's 10%. Whatever you think it's worth, it's probably worth 10%. So if you think it's worth $100, it's probably worth 10. Okay. Um, I want you to, this is, this, is the, this is the most important thing I'm going to say today. You, you got to include your time. What is your time worth? Right? Yeah. What's the value of your time? I say 20 bucks here in the States. I mean, you can say 20 pounds if you want for you guys. 18 pounds, I don't know, whatever. The, I don't know the conversion. But you want to make sure you're valuing your time because say something is worth, you can sell it for 500 bucks, but it's going to take you 10 hours to sell it, to pick it up, to pack it, to list it, to market it, to then follow through with the person and then have it delivered, right? Or ship it. You're talking 10 hours, all right? If your time is worth 20 bucks an hour, well, now you're $200 and you only sold it for 500. All right. Now you only got 300. You got to pay taxes on it. That's another 50. Now you're down to 150 bucks. Was it worth your time to make 150 bucks? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. Yeah. Sometimes you're better off just donating it. Yeah. 
much better off donating. I, I would argue majority of the time you're better off donating it unless it's a high ticket album. Yeah. But on the selling side, go find out what it sold for. Um, I can give you websites, but I mean, I use EBTH, everything but the house. I do use Facebook Marketplace for big furniture, big, mm -hmm. big furniture, um, because that's not going to sell for a lot of money. The furniture doesn't sell. So I list it for like 100 or 200 bucks just to get it out of there because somebody else will come to the house and pick it up for free. Mm -hmm. So I've saved, I've saved quite a bit of money not having to deal with it, right? It yeah. doesn't matter if you actually make money. You just want to get it out for free. But the, um, the small stuff, always get it on an online auction. That's really the key thing when you're selling it. You, a local auctioneer is going to be limited to their viewers, right? Who's going to be there? But if you get in an online national auction house, um, that is going to get the most viewers. And that includes eBay, but eBay is very complicated. It's not for everybody. Um, but I don't use Craigslist. I don't know if Craigslist they even have it over there. I, it's just not safe. Um, but Facebook Marketplace, you can at least see the person and be very careful with all the different scams, right? Yeah. And I, yeah. I make, if, with the exception of furniture, I'll have people meet me somewhere else, not my home. I'll meet yeah. me or something, but if I don't know them. But I like Facebook Marketplace because if it doesn't sell on the first day, I take it right over to the Buy Nothing group and people come pick it up for free. Yeah. That's what we do. Uh, that's what we do a lot here in the UK. That you've got fantastic uh, giveaway apps like yeah. Free Cycle and Freegal yeah. and Olio, and it's like yeah. it's all these things that you kind of think it's it would be a shame to throw it away because somebody else can still get some life. But I don't want to do it in a charity shop because it's not clothes and not shoes yeah. and not kind of the things that you almost know a charity shop likes. But it's so fantastic not to, to have to throw things away. Somebody, there's some weird person on the other side of this app that is going to love specifically that exactly. item, right? Yeah. And think about it. Whose item was it? Was it your mom's? Was it your dad? Was it yours? It Oftentimes, we have a lot of guilt when we're donating things. When we're trying to get rid of them. We think, oh, it was my mother. She'd be so upset if I gave this away. Yeah. Actually, she wouldn't. Actually, I, I can argue against that. Your mom would rather it go to someone that would truly appreciate it. Yeah. And sitting on a, you know, on a shelf at Goodwill, right? Yeah. So go ahead and a thread a random thrift store. So go ahead and, and use those apps and get it to the person that truly appreciates it. Exactly. So Matt, we've just talked about legacy list. What is next for you? Well, you know, I was on hoarders for 15 years and I thought I got away from hoarding. Um, I've been really focusing on downsizing, but I got brought back into the mix and I've got a, a a major uh, network here in the States has asked me to come back and do a fun, positive hoarding show. Wow. So they said, we want you to clean out the biggest message you've ever seen, but we want it to be funny. We want it to be positive. They said, can you do it? And I was like, yeah, actually, that's all we ever do, right? Like, let's do it, man. So we're casting right now. If you go on my any of my internet sites, you'll see it. Uh, we're looking for really, really big collections. We're helping families that have, people that have collected large amounts of things, everything from Star Wars to Hummels to you name it, the cars. If you've got a big collection, it's overtaking your house. We're going to come in, help you clean it up and help you sell a lot of the items and make space for whatever new life you want. And uh, do it in a fun, positive way. And I'm really excited. We start filming next month, actually, for that. And that'll what? come out in the fall and you'll see it worldwide. It'll be streaming uh, and on cable. And I'm really, really excited. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. That's amazing. So oh, I, we can't wait. For, I hope we can see it here as well, but you, I'm sure. You'll be able to, I can assure you, you'll be able to see it nation, around oh, the world. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Looks excited about that. Public television. You can, it's hard to, it's hard to get, you know, legacy list is hard to find. Uh, you can go on uh, in P, no, P, PBS.org. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to see it internationally there, but for the most part, I mean, I made the best show I've ever made was on is a legacy list and no one's seen it because you can't, you just, it's hard to see. So I'm, oh, I'm excited to get back to cable and where anyone in the world can see it. Lovely. Oh, congratulations, Matt. That's fantastic. And I know so many of our listeners are going to be so excited because the last time you were here on the, on the show, the podcast got listened to, to so many people, so many people got in touch and said, Oh, I love the episode and it's been fabulous. So thank you so much for, for being our guest. So listeners, has this made you think about what items have I got in my home? What would be my top five or 10 of really, really, really special items that I would want to make sure that my family knows the story of? Let us know in the comments. Share with us. We would love to hear from you. And for now, let me say thank you to Matt for being here. We really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much. And good luck to everybody. Let's see those legacy lists. I want to see them.
I know. Thank you so much. See you everyone next week. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week.